Welcome to Module of the Week from Synthesizer Reviews. This is Episode 2. Today we're going to be focusing on the Seguencer by Synthetic Sound Labs. Um, it is a, for those of you who don't know, it is a 4-input control voltage switch um, that may be putting it, um, maybe oversimplifying it. Um, it has 4 inputs. Uh, for audio or control voltage. Um, it has a mix output that is the result of the switch. Uh, it has an individual VCA out, so those VCAs are triggered by the different stages of the switch. And then you have a depth in, which is a control voltage in for kind of how the switch behaves. Um, this demo will be not musical really at all um it's going it might even sound bad just because we're going to be listening to the same pitch for a while um but i'm going to be using the same w different waveforms from the same oscillator um using the scope to kind of help illustrate some of the points that we're going to talk about so the oscillator we're using today is a core synth odyssey of sound c104 we're going to be using three outputs from that. We're going to be using the saw wave, a pulse wave, and also a one of the two options for the, the clipping out uh, circuit. Um, we're using that one specifically um, because it will just look different on the scope. So we have a more visual identification as we're changing from one of the inputs to another. So we'll have three pretty different looking um, waves on our scope and we will kind of blend between them. So let's just get right into it. So we have input one, two, three, and four. Then we have the corresponding VCAs. Then we have our, the width of, which is kind of which, I would say maybe what, which of the four it is uh, letting through the switch um, and then we have the depth which is this is uh, a, a essentially an attenuator as I understand it somebody will correct me if I'm wrong this is an attenuator for our depth input um, and so I'll show you kind of how it works so the width we can manually select through the through the four stages and you'll see them light up so this is completely closed and you'll notice when it's completely closed uh, there's no audio or wave going through so it's almost a through zero switch I guess you could say um, But when it is receiving no voltage and the width is all the way at zero. It is completely closed So we're gonna start rolling it on That's our saw wave square and there is our diode circuit back down so you'll see on the scope uh, you'll see it actually appear saw wave pulse wave and then um, the diode wave which is kind of already mangled on its own um, but you'll it'll just be a, a good visual representation right now we are in slope mode which is a smooth transition between the uh, states so I'm gonna I'll do that one more time completely closed Uh, so let's try the peaks mode, which I believe is a more abrupt change from state to state. Yeah, so that's uh, in peaks mode. It's not really blending between the two. It is just selecting one than the other. Um, there is no 
gap between the two there's no kind of latency or anything so you're you're not necessarily hearing um, a dropout but you are hearing definite uh, definition between the waves I'll do that one more time okay so that's uh, we've looked at peaks and slope um, uh, and then we can talk about our depth so depth is in for in slope mode it controls how um, how the gate opens and closes so this is our, you know manually opening the gate this is So that is a sine wave LFO um, going into depth. It is mixing with a little bit of fixed voltage, and I'll explain why. Um, because, as we talked about before, um, the depth is until it, until it gets enough voltage, either from its itself or its, the input, um, it's completely closed. So what I'd like to do is add a little bit of fixed voltage to it. So even when the LFO is at its, the bottom of its cycle, at least the first input is coming through the, the switch. So I'm just mixing a fixed voltage of only about a volt uh, and my LFO. And then we'll bring that attenuator up. That's about four. So I'm going to show you if without that, without that fixed voltage, I'm going to show you what. So without the fixed voltage uh, at the bottom of the cycle of the LFO or whatever modulation uh, you're putting into it, uh, it's gonna there's gonna be a complete absence of sound. So that can either work for you or against you. You just would have to know that that's that that's gonna do that. Um, one a couple things about the module that I haven't quite figured out is that without our modulation in with no depth. Um, manually opening the the width it won't get all the way to four so in either mode peaks or slope unless you're feeding it voltage uh, into the depth input you won't get anything out of your fourth uh, VCA input that may be mine being miscalibrated uh, that may be how it's designed to work I don't know I'm just saying what I see uh, there's another function of this uh, like I talked about with them it has a mix output you also have individual VCA outs for each of the four stages um, and so you could use that you could use that to, to create a stereo image um, you know, moving back and forth in the stereo field. If you have uh, a panning mixer, you can you can use that function. There's a great video that I will include the link to uh, someone using the individual outputs of their fixed filter bank um, into the different VCA inputs on the sequencer and using it to to kind of scan through those. Um, uh, and that's a that's a, a great function uh, since that video already exists I'm not going to take the time to do that now um, I will include include the link in the description 
Um, if you guys have any questions about this or if you want to correct anything wrong that I said, f please feel free to do so. Um, if I need to make a part two to this, I'm happy to do that. Um, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. We'll do another one of these next week. Um, I think next week we're going to do the Double Decca Ultrasonic VCO, which I'm very excited about. Thanks a lot.